Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, we've got some project changes related to contributing, PR review, and the formalization of working groups, new color grading and state management features, as well as some exciting experiments and demos. Particularly interesting on the experimental side of things is a new crate and some experimentation with Bevy and Velo. Additionally, I'd like to call out a couple of PRs that we're going to be looking at, visibility ranges, filmic color grading, and GPU frustum culling, as being particularly well commented with straightforward PR descriptions. They serve as pretty great entry points into reading about their respective topics in the Bevy context. So let's start off by talking about filmic color grading. Bevy's existing tone mapping feature set has expanded to a complete set of filmic color grading tools, matching those of engines like Unity, Unreal, and Godot. This includes white point adjustment, hue rotation, and color correction. There's also a brand new example called color grading that acts as a playground for exploring these color grading feature set. And while not being directly Bevy related, there's a talk on a Rust UI framework happening at Rust NL this week. This is interesting because the rendering backend for it, Velo, is already being used in tandem with Bevy for rendering SVG and other UI. This of course isn't official integration, just in the third party ecosystem and in some experiments. This includes the Bevy Velo crate that we'll talk about a little bit later, as well as more experimental integrations like the board game showcase mentioned later in this issue. And now that Alice has started their first day, there are some project management changes, some contributing documentation that has been updated. They've generously decided to put up a public board indicating their personal priorities and what they're working on. This is by no means an official Bevy roadmap, but rather it's just Alice sharing what they're working on. Some of the first changes made were refactoring issue and PR labels, more guidance on closing PRs, as well as requesting reviews, and a formalization of working groups, which has been an informal working behavior in the group of people who contribute to Bevy for a while now. The formalization of working groups is especially nice as this means there's a documented process for broad consensus building and for joining in or are starting on new work. That brings us to GPU frustum culling. The view frustum is the area of the world that might appear on screen. Frustum culling then is the process of removing objects that won't appear in that area and thus would waste resources to render because they will not be on screen. Frustum culling can now be optionally done on the GPU. To enable it, you'd add the GPU culling component to your camera. And next up, we've got the visibility range component. This is an implementation of hierarchical level of detail, which allows developers to specify camera distances in which meshes are shown and hidden. This is useful because hiding meshes happens early in the rendering pipeline, so this feature can be used for level of detail optimizations. Additionally, this feature is properly evaluated per view, so different views can show different levels of detail. Meshlet's had a couple PRs come in this week, including level of detail compatible two class occlusion culling, as well as some data upload performance optimizations. And following on to last week, the example added in a PR last week that demos meshlets requires downloading an asset that was deemed too large to include in the Git repo. That asset is now documented in the meshlet example metadata, which you can read and also runs in CI to execute the example. With 11.4.26, the capabilities of state-related infrastructure expands from just states to include computed states and substates. Computed states are derived states, while substates are states that only exist inside of other states. The functionality here seems very flexible, and I'm excited to see what usage patterns people land on after they're more widely used and in a release. There are now three state examples, including state.rs, computedstates.rs, and substates.rs. And of course, as long as all goes well, Alice puts out a weekly merge train that is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And that brings us to the showcases. This week, we've got Jarl's quick items menu. The UI here is all vanilla Bevy UI for Jarl, a fantasy colony builder that we've seen before. Thincraft is a tech demo using Bevy that now also runs on Steam Deck. You can check out the code on the Steam Deck branch and GitHub or check out this video on YouTube. Here we have an implementation of voxel lighting. The sources for the algorithms used are included in the Discord thread. And here you can see a debug view of those algorithms. Next up, we've got a Sakaban game, a little puzzle game. This implementation also includes a solver that you can see operating here. Next up, we've got Hill Vacuum. Hill Vacuum is an editor for building 2D style Doom maps. And I personally found it easiest to see what it does in this YouTube video but the readme in the GitHub is also very informative. This VR chat demo pulls inspiration from 
a hidden alley scene that we've linked on the website. The Discord thread contains some fun progress from this original image to this much brighter later image. This demo is prep work for a VJ set, which will include many more hexagons and additional elements. For anyone familiar with them, Boyd seems like a pretty reasonable starting project. And this is a Boyd simulation that is some of the author's first work with Bevy. The source for this one is available on GitHub. Our next demo is a reactive JSON-based scripting language, which you can see here. It now also supports events. Score, kill feed, and a new lighting and camera system, the playtests for this Wizard Arena game happen at 2015 CET every other Saturday. A link to the playtests are in the thread. The next showcase we have is one that I have to encourage you to go check out in the thread on your own. This is a spatial audio solution demo, and thus you'll want to hear it instead of my voice. This showcase is the beginning of a rewrite of Steam Audio in Rust. Markov Jr. is a probabilistic programming language where programs are combinations of rewrite rules and inferences performed via constraint propagation. But if that didn't make sense to you, another phrasing is that a Markov Jr. is a DSL for procedural generation, as you can see on the screen here. The crate for this will hopefully be published soon, but in the meantime, you can check out this Markov Jr. GitHub repo that we've linked to on the site, which shows off just about how much you can do with this. And I promised we would get back to it, but this is showcase demos a bevy rendering abstraction using Velo, as well as a nascent feature for required components. The required components feature is an experiment in itself in allowing bevy components to declare other components that are required to exist on an entity. Such required components would be inserted with their default values in this experiment if they didn't already exist. And to be clear, this is just a branch in somebody's bevy fork. There are no guarantees about this getting merged in. But on the topic of Velo, this demo uses a custom Velo render trait that can be implemented for components, which will then re-render with Velo whenever the component changes. The code, as you can see, is available in a gist, but if you plan on using Velo as just a consumer, you may prefer to use the Bevy Velo crate instead, which we'll talk about a little later. There's also some great discussion on the topic of Bevy and Velo in the Discord thread for this one. And this Animal Crossing inspired game gets regular updates over on Mastodon such as this tennis court restyle, these health indicators, and the ability to dash back and forth. That's it for the showcases this week. Let's get into the crate releases. First off, we've got Bevy RTC. Bevy RTC is a simple multi-platform web RTC networking library for client server topologies. It is a higher level built on top of Matchbox, which has been around for a while and is fairly mature. Bevy Entitiles got its 0.9 release. Bevy Entitiles is a 2D tile map crate inspired by Bevy ECS tile map and Bevy ECS LDTK. The major feature in 0.9 is support for multiple tile sets in one tile map. And with another iOS release, we've got Bevy iOS Game Center. This is a Bevy plugin in Swift package to provide access to the iOS game kit or game center from inside Bevy. Features include authentication, save games, achievements, and leaderboards. Bevy Async Task provides Bevy system parameters to run async tasks in the background with timeout support and future output in the same system. It provides syntactic sugar to reduce boilerplate when blocking on features within synchronous contexts. This crate supports Wasm and native, but mobile is untested. And of course, we're down to Bevy Velo, which we've mentioned a couple times in this issue already. Bevy Velo is a rendering integration for rendering vector graphics in the Bevy game engine. There are caveats, but currently it can render standard Velo scenes as well as SVG and Lottie files. And that's it for the crate releases this week. Let's get into the dev logs. This dev log is for the making of Fishing for a Princess. Fishing for a Princess is a multiplayer Fodian game. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. In the style of Jump King. This dev log covers the work done initially creating the game for a game jam and points at the author's intent to continue development moving forward. The game makes use of Igui, Laminar, and Rapier. After giving a talk at the recent unofficial Bevy meetup, Saya got its first devlog. Saya is a game featuring voxel graphics where you play a samurai summoned to rid the worlds of darkness. As you defeat enemies, you gradually accumulate evil essence with the help of your Saya, which you can then utilize to enhance your abilities. In addition to the devlog, work on this game is also done on stream. And of course, we had to mention Alice's Rust game dev survey. Alice ran a short about five days survey of the Rust game dev space and the results are now in. Take the results with a grain of salt, but the information can still be interesting. You can find the results described either on Reddit or in the Discord thread. And finally, we've got a first look at To Build a Home. 
This is the first look at an upcoming life simulation called To Build a Home that we've actually seen in previous issues. It's inspired by games like The Sims and Dwarf Fortress, and it aims to create a complex simulation of human life focused on the small scale of everyday life. The game behavior is defined in text files and sprites that can be easily changed by players, making modding, hopefully, very easy. And that brings us to the end of this week. We've already covered the merged PRs. With the addition of these new labels that happened this week, hopefully we'll get a little bit more categorization going on the website. But until then, we do have a full list of the pull requests that were open this week that need some review, as well as the issues that were open this week, which may need some recreation or a little bit more work. Some of the issues that are filed are just cleanups. So if you're looking to get into contributing to Bevy, these could be really great examples. That's it for this week. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one.